And I'm warning you now, nobody warned me, nobody told me nothing. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you some things I wish I knew in my 30s. If you're entering into your 30s or you're already in your 30s and you're still not sure what to expect and what you want to get out of your 30s, this series is going to be for you. I'm going to share with you some things I wish I knew while entering into my 30s. So if you are interested, keep on watching. Welcome back. If you are new to the channel and you've never seen my face before, my name is Shamir Nicole. And today we're going to be talking about some tips I wish I knew in my 30s. Now, I've been in my 30s for quite some time now. I'm towards the end of my 30s. But these are some things I did not even think about. Some things I did not anticipate at all. And if you're in your 30s or you're about to enter in your 30s, these are going to be some things that I want you to prepare yourself for. Now, this is going to be a part of a series and I'm going to be breaking these things down because there are a lot of things that we need to consider as women enter into our 30s. So, so today we're going to be focusing more so on the body, some things that are going to be happening, some things to kind of look out for, and some of my tips and a little bit of my tricks. So let's jump into today's video. So as you know by now, things are going to change in your 30s and that is physically, mentally, and spiritually. So today we're going to be focusing on some of those physical changes and as I said earlier, these are going to be some things that I want you to kind of prepare yourself for. If you know it's going to be making this transition a little bit easier for you and I wish these were things that someone shared with me because when I start to find some of this stuff out I was looking crazy okay I had no idea so the first tip I want to share with you guys is something that we should already be incorporating into our 20s but if you are like me you didn't pay this any attention and that is the power of sunscreen listen to me and listen to me clear sunscreen is going to save 95% of your skin problems if you have acne prone skin sensitive skin um, you're seeing fine lines and wrinkles your sunscreen is going to be a preventative measure and a lot of times even as women in our 30s we are trying to combat a lot of the damage that we did in our 20s sitting out in the sun all day trying to get tan trying to get cute and all of that now we're in our 30s we know a little bit more you know what i'm saying so now we have to protect our skin as we try to repair our skin from the stuff that we did earlier on so sunscreen is a must but the thing that i want to really share with you guys is unfortunately when we think of sunscreen we're only just putting it on our face and we're like out the door i am here to tell you as a woman in my 30s when you put your sunscreen on please make sure that you are putting sunscreen on your face as well as putting sunscreen on your neck and on the back of your hands as we age, those are going to be the signs that you are aging. You're going to be able to tell by people's hands, of course, their neck and the wrinkles that you see on your face. And we often forget our neck. So please, please, please make sure you apply sunscreen liberally and make sure that you're applying it to all three of those places. Since we're still talking about skin, as a woman in your 30s, you really want to make sure that you are focusing on quality skincare. Do not fall for the commercials where it's telling you you need X, Y, and Z. Keep it basic, but make sure that it's quality ingredients. You want to make sure that you have a quality moisturizer. I personally have two. I have a day moisturizer that is a little bit lighter and it has an SPF in it. And then I have a nighttime moisturizer that's a little bit thicker. Um, it doesn't have SPF in it, but it has more ingredients that are going to be preventative. Again, I am trying to fight gravity and age. So I'm focusing on products that have better quality ingredients. Also, making sure that you have a under eye cream. Again, it does not matter if you don't see any wrinkles or lines or anything like that yet. The name of the game is preventative care. So you want to make sure you're preventing this stuff before you actually see these things. So making sure that you have a really good under eye cream, making sure that you have a face serum, especially for my ladies who are suffering from dry skin. Always make sure that you are spending that money on the quality ingredients. You don't have to have everything under the sun, but the basics and the staples in your skincare routine need to be quality. Also, if your budget will allow, please make sure that you are getting those facials. It's always good to see a professional, someone who specializes in skincare, who can assist you on what products you will need for your skin type. And also, it really makes sure that you're not spending money on all of these really good ingredients if your skin is not prepared to absorb all of these things. So I would highly recommend find an esthetician, go for a facial maybe one or two times a year, 
get some professional help so that you can really make sure that you are on a long-term skincare regimen. Oh man, so this next tip is something I was not prepared for and I think I probably, I thought about my grandma when I was thinking about this and I didn't realize that this stuff started so early and that is excessive body hair. Oh girl, in your 30s, you're gonna start seeing hair come out of nowhere. You're gonna see hair on your chin. You're gonna start seeing hair on your cheeks. All types of funky stuff. I even seen a hair on my chest. Girl, almost die, okay? In your 30s, you're gonna to start to see excessive body hair, so prepare for that. And one thing that I also was not prepared for was the amount of gray hair I started to develop in my 30s. And I'm talking about gray girl. Now, of course, a lot of us are starting to gray maybe even earlier than that. But again, I am going to um, talk about some hair that starts to gray a little bit below the equator. If you catch my drift, okay? I was taking care of my good sis. And I started seeing all of these gray hairs that I was not prepared for. And I was like... I'm so young, why is my hair turning gray? So prepare yourself for the excessive amount of gray hair that you are going to start to encounter in your 30s. I'm warning you now, nobody warned me, nobody told me nothing, okay? So prepare for the gray hair, cause it's coming. Also something that people did not warn me about was skin tags and even excessive stretch marks. We do know that you may gain a little bit more weight, but I was starting to see stretch marks in places I didn't even think about. Like I have stretch marks on my calves from my legs getting larger. I have skin tags now on my neck and all of these things I just really didn't think about. I was associating all of these things with, you know, being in my 50s and 60s, but this stuff starts to develop really early. So you are going to start to see some of these changes. And I'm going to talk about why we see some of these changes in our 30s a little bit later on in this video, but prepare for the excessive changes in your skin. So with these changes in your skin, you're going to also notice that your skin is going to become a little more dry, a little more flaky. And again, this is all going to be a lot of times associated with your hormones. So just prepare to start switching up some of your hygiene products. A lot of those lotions like from Bath and Body Works, and different gift sets that we may get. They smell good, they smell amazing, but they are not going to moisturize and hydrate your skin like they did in our 20s. So they're good for the smell, but make sure that you, again, are investing in products that are going to actually moisturize your skin so that you can prevent the skin tag, so that you can prevent those stretch marks. I typically find that a lot of the moisturizers that work well for my skin always come in a jar. So think about like Nivea, things that come in a tin. Actual body oils are going to be really great for helping to seal in the moisture that you have in your skin as you put on your creams and then putting like almost like layering the products. So I'll put on a heavy cream and then depending on the time of year, I'll go right in and put a body oil on top of that. And I noticed that it keeps my skin hydrated a little bit longer. Another thing I did not consider as we age that our skin is going to start to have a hard time of rejuvenating itself, shedding that old excess layer of skin so that we can have that shiny new skin our face does this from time to time but our body does it also so for you ladies who suffer with strawberry legs those little dots that you see on your skin the key to that is exfoliating making sure that you exfoliate your skin when you moisturize is going to also help to remove that dead layer of skin so that your skin looks healthy and smoother also, when you shave your legs, a lot of times you're removing that excess dead skin. But if you do not shave every day, a good way of removing that dead skin is to exfoliate. Once a week, I exfoliate my entire body and then I go in again with my heavy body creams and oils, really just to make sure that my skin always stays smooth. So I would highly recommend that if you're not doing so already, make sure you start to exfoliate your body. As a woman in our 30s, you're going to also notice that your hormones are going to start going all over the place. It is inevitable. It was something I was not thinking about honestly i thought by this point i was going to be able to really like learn how to ride the dragon but unfortunately not my hormones did like a 180 or something i don't know what happened but they just went crazy and because of that it started to affect my hair my skin my nails my body 
everything. Also know that that is going to be tied to a lot of the weight gain you may experience in your 30s. As your body starts to change in your 30s, you're going to notice that you're going to be a little more puffy. Your body is going to start to hold on to water. This is going to be associated with health issues that you may already have that are pre-existing, but it is also hormone related. So one thing that I recommend is to start incorporating lymphatic drainage into your routine. That is a specialty massage that is going to help to drain your lymphatic system. It's really going to help with the puffiness, the swelling. And I also realized that when I started to do lymphatic drainage on my face, it will start to really define and sculpt my face. You can also do this type of drainage by using the gua sha. That is the little metal or sometimes the stone that you see people using to scrape their face and to sculpt their face. It is a form of lymphatic drainage. And that is really going to help to reduce that water retention and just that really overall feeling of just heaviness and puffiness from that water retention because unfortunately as I said all of these things are going to start to occur in your 30s and we want to be prepared for so that when it does happen we have a great routine already in place to combat it. Now as I said because of the hormonal changes that you are going to experience your body is going to do some funky stuff and one of the things that is going to change is your body chemistry. The first thing that I realized is that as my body's chemistry started to change, my perfumes did not smell the same. And I couldn't understand for the life of me why certain perfumes I didn't like anymore or they just smelled so different. And it was because my body chemistry was changing. A good sign of noticing when your body chemistry is starting to change is you're always going to see it in your hair, your skin, and your nails. Primarily for me, it's always going to be your hair. You are going to start to notice that the texture of your hair is going to change. You might oftentimes see your hair starts to get a little more brittle. It starts to shed a little bit more than normal. And you're also going to see that your scalp is a little more dry and itchy. Meaning you might start seeing flare ups of dermatitis, flare ups of actual dandruff stuff that you've never seen before and that is a sign that your body chemistry is changing and because I am a cosmetologist I do want to talk about the hair a little bit more as I said that is going to be one of your first indicators that your body chemistry is changing and because of that I'm also going to tell you that in your 30s you are going to have to wash your hair and cleanse your scalp a little bit more than normal. When we were teenagers and maybe in our early 20s, we were able to go, you know, two weeks, possibly three weeks without washing our hair. In your 30s, it is not going to be the same thing. You are going to have to cleanse your scalp more often than you usually did. So I'm going to recommend that you wash your hair at minimum once a week. Now this is also a good practice for anybody who's watching this and they're still in their 20s, but I'm going to tell you that in your 30s is going to be almost mandatory. If you want to maintain a healthy scalp, and of course a healthy scalp is going to give you healthy hair. And while we're talking about hair, skin, and nails, I'm also going to tell you that in your 30s you're going to realize that you cannot eat the things that you used to eat in your 20s. It is is just not going to happen sis you are literally what you eat and, and in your 30s you are going to see the effects immediately of the things that you ingest in your body so if your diet is not on point again you are always going to see the signs in your hair your skin and your nails if your hair is brittle your nails are thin they're starting to break off they're chipping really easily if your skin is extremely dry and flaky that is a sign that your diet is not up to par. Now, I want you to remember that your hair is made of keratin, okay? That is a protein. So if you are lacking protein or you're iron deficient, as I said, you're going to always see the signs in your hair. Your physical appearance is going to be a direct reflection of your diet, what you ingest, what you put in your body is going to show on the outside. So I have a few more things I want to share with you that I did not consider in my 30s and that is to invest in quality cotton undergarments. You're going to notice that even your natural body odor is going to change again because your body chemistry and so I would highly recommend that you invest in some quality 
undergarments. I would suggest that making sure that those garments are cotton because cotton is going to absorb more. I highly recommend doing that and I know that we want to keep it cute and we want to keep it sexy and we want to feel all of the things but all of those lacy undergarments that we were wearing are not going to be the wave especially wearing those things every single day. As I said your body chemistry is going to change and you're going to notice that in terms of feminine hygiene Wearing those lacy underwear and panties that have that satin like center is going to cause you to have some gynecological issues. I don't want to get too vulgar on here, but you're going to notice those things are going to start to happen more again because your body chemistry is changing. So I highly recommend to think about the undergarments that you are wearing and even some of those feminine hygiene products that you are using in those areas. Less is more. If it has all that fragrance in it and those specialty lotions and sprays and all of that stuff. Stuff, ditch it. Try to use more holistic products especially in regards to feminine hygiene because as I said when your body chemistry starts to change and those hormones start to get out of whack those products that you were using in your 20s because you want to smell good and all that stuff is going to be totally different in your 30s. So there will be a part two to this series of all of the things that I wish I knew in my 30s. But for today, that's going to end today's video. So if you enjoyed today's video, make sure you thumbs up and subscribe. And if you also want to share some things that you wish you knew in your 30s, feel free to leave it in the comments section below. As always, you guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.